Hey guys, it's me, Ben Walker, and I'm here with Dugong for the interview. Hey guys, it's me, Dugong, from the Indian and Western Pacific Oceans. All right, let's get started. But uh, uh, first, you need anything to eat? Uh, if you have a plant, that'd be cool. I, I got some, some grass outside. There you go. Thanks. Hey guys, it's me, Ben Walker, here with the ad read. Today's sponsor is DNA. Wow. Transcription occurs in the nucleus in eukaryotes like the dugong and in the cytoplasm of prokaryotes. Uh, transcription is the process of copying DNA into RNA. Uh, transcription makes mRNA, which is used to send the message of what amino acids are needed. Uh, RNA is different from DNA because it contains uracil instead of thymine, uh, and isn't a double helix like DNA. Uh, transcription occurs in the ribosome and in the cytoplasm and is used to make proteins. R RNA makes ribosomes. The, those are the location for translation. Uh, mRNA, as previously stated, sends the message. tRNA translates the message into the anticodons. Uh, anticodons are translated into codons in the ribosome. Uh, the codons tell the ribosome which amino acids to make. Stop codons tell the ribosome to stop the chain. Amino acids determine how the protein will fold up and take shape, so different amino acid sequences cause different shaped proteins. The four levels of protein structure are primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. Alleles are different versions of a gene. There are usually two versions, a dominant and a recessive. Having any amount of dominant alleles makes it a dominant gene, but you need to have both recessive alleles to have a recessive gene. Mutations can cause a lot of problems for proteins and alleles. For example, a frame shift mutation uh, will shift the spot of each codon, and that makes completely different amino acids, which uh, make completely different shaped proteins. Uh, and that means you could have completely different alleles, which would usually be kind of bad. It could give you something like sickle cell or cystic fibrosis, for example. That's the end of this ad read. What's the first question? What traits do you have that are good for your survival? Oh, uh, I have bristles on my lip. Uh, that helps me find and eat seagrass. Uh, and I also have tusks to fight. Uh, I got good hearing. Uh, that's always helpful. Uh, lots of blubber on my back, which uh, can protect me from sneak attacks from behind. And it also helps me stay warm. And I've got front flippers for balance and turning. Cool. I don't think I ever asked you your name. Would you like to tell them your taxonomic name? Oh, my taxonomic name is Dugong Dugon. What's the best picture you have taken of yourself? Oh. Yeah, here. This is a good picture. Thank you. Do you have any relatives? No, everyone in my family is dead. Oh. Manatees are like my distant relative, but that's about it. That's kind of sad. What do you share in common with manatees being the only related in order? We split uh, around 34 million years ago, uh, and we have some similarities. Uh, I got this, this tree thing that shows only me, the only living member of uh, Dugonine. And the manatees, the only living member of Tri Sheka Shade, remain. We both have quadrupedal swimming and reduced hind limbs and pelvises. Uh, a way that's different that the manatees are different from me uh, is like the, uh, their tail and how they use it to swim. That is very interesting. How did you guys separate? We separated because of natural selection and evolution. 
uh, we lived in different areas, uh, so different traits were helpful to each of us. Uh, uh, the, the, the ones that were good in one environment, uh, the, one, the, the animal with that trait would survive and reproduce, uh, which would lead to all of the animals in that area eventually having that trait because the ones that don't have it would die. Um, and the ones that have that trait are called fit because they're like, they're fit for their environment. Uh, the, the trait is also known as an adaptation. Uh, the genes uh, sort of like mutated, they changed to better suit the area. Uh, natural selection is, like I said, the ones that are fit are the ones that survive and reproduce. So that's why we were different because we had different areas. So different traits were good. So that's what it eventually we're different enough. And that's pretty cool. You said that you live in different areas. Where do each of you live? Oh, the area. I've got a map over here. What are the other animals on the map? The blues and the greens uh, are types of manatees, uh, which I said were my only living relati relatives. Uh, and uh, the red, the stellar sea cow uh, is an extinct animal that went extinct in 1741. That is very sad. How did your area lead to the adaptations that we talked about earlier? Well, the bristles, I said, were to find seagrass, and that's because seagrass is in the area uh, that I live in and I eat it. And the tusks and good hearing can help evade and defend against predators of the area like sharks and killer whales. The blubber keeps me warm, but can also provide defense against those predators. And the flippers help me swim because my area is in the ocean. Uh, and they're all physical adaptations also. That makes sense. What mutations do you think could be helpful for me in my area? Well, I think if you mutated to have more powerful flippers, you'd be able to swim faster and it would uh, make you get more food and maybe evade predators. Uh, if you mutated to have no tail, that wouldn't be helpful because then you wouldn't be able to swim very good. Yeah, that makes sense. So, when you first got here, you ate some grass. What do you normally eat? I usually eat seagrass, and I eat algae if there's any seagrass. I'm a graminivore, so uh, just plants usually. But some dugongs have been known to eat jellyfish, or like shellfish, which is like kind of weird. So, you're a heterotroph? Yes. What else do you need to survive? Uh, shallow warm water, because uh, that's like where the food grows ask some other questions here. Uh, are you a keystone species? I don't think so. There are lots of similar things that could probably take my place. Like, every predator I have eats lots of other stuff as well, so they'd probably do all right without me. What is the food web like in your area? Oh, uh, here's a picture. Uh, the food chain uh, is shown with the names. Uh, it goes from blue at the bottom of the chain which is like the producers to red at the top. Uh, they're marked H for herbivore, O for omnivore, and C for carnivore. Uh, the ones with blue names are producers, like I said. And uh, in the picture you can see, uh, we compete with krill for algae, and uh, we're prey to like sharks and killer whales and crocodiles. That's pretty cool. What would be an example of mutualism uh, we have a symbiotic relationship with the remora. It eats parasites uh, on us and we protect it from predators. That's nice. So why is biodiversity important? Well, there are a lot of reasons. Uh, we have biodiversity, we wouldn't have the same ecosystems that pro provide us with food. Uh, so it would lead to lots of species not being able to eat and dying. Uh, you need a diverse cast of animals to keep an area functional. So uh, if you take some out, the environment can't function. Uh, also for humans, they sell a lot of plants and animals uh, since they eat them, you know. Uh, without biodiversity, they wouldn't have all these different types of things to sell. It would not be good economically. Uh, and like finally, humans 
would be sad if animals died, you know? They like animals. Yeah. I'd be very sad if all the dugongs died. How would extinction impact your environment? Well, predators like sharks and killer whales would lose a big food source, so their population would decrease a bit. Uh, it wouldn't be too bad though, because they eat like a lot of things. But uh, there'd be more seagrass and algae with us gone, because uh, like we wouldn't be eating it, and that means there'd be like more krill, like on the on the food web. We should krill eat algae also, so there'd be like plenty for them to eat. Uh, it would mean an increase in whales if there was an increase in krill, because whales eat krill. Uh, I don't think if we were gone, it would have too major of an impact, because, uh, like I said, there's there's stuff that could replace this. I, Squeeze Gogurt, am interrupting this program to tell you how to save dugongs. There are only about 100,000 dugongs left. They have completely disappeared from Hong Kong, Mauritius, and Taiwan. They've disappeared in parts of Japan, Cambodia, Vietnam, the Philippines, and they're projected to disappear from China and more. We need to do something to save the dugong. But who will fund the plan to save dugongs? I found a charity called the Nature Conservancy that seemed pretty reliable. Looked like they were helping to conserve species like the dugong. Uh, so donating to them would most likely help. Uh, they would probably be able to fund plans that would help the dugong. Uh, but of course you should look into them more before uh, you give them your money. Uh, they, they could like be doing stuff that I didn't see. What are some steps that we could take to help the dugong survive? A lot of the reason that the dugong is going extinct is because of habitat loss and water pollution. Uh, and there's lots of ways that you can combat those. So uh, those are steps that you should take. Uh, to combat water pollution, you can do things like picking up litter, using less water, using reusable items instead of one-time use ones, playing trees, recycling, cleaning up after pets, uh, etc. Uh, and habitat loss, uh, all of those things. Uh, as well, you can uh, sign petitions that would combat things like building factories and removing Pacific habitat areas. Uh, so all of those things would help. All right, uh, for my actual project, one of the points is that I need uh, to talk about what I changed uh, because of feedback and I don't know how to do that in character. So I'm just gonna like throw that right here. Uh, I added more pictures to the project because I was told I needed more. Uh, Another thing that we need to consider is, is the dugong worth it? Uh, I think so. Uh, letting species just go extinct because there's similar ones that could replace it is not a good idea. In the podcast, uh, they talked about uh, how important biodiversity is. Uh, and I think that's reason enough to try hardest to save the dugong. So I hope you listen to what I say uh, and try and help save the dugong. Thank you.